topic, and I love this Whispers from Eternity that Jaita read, because it's all about the, the hidden nature of the soul, that we think we are many self-definitions, as Swamiji said, of being a man or woman or black or white or Indian or American or whatever. But inside, the soul is a spark of God and it's ever shining and it's ever waiting to be um, revealed, you could say. And Yoganandaji said so beautifully that uh, we live in a self-created darkness or ignorance that we just don't see the light, but the light is ever there, joy is ever there, peace, love, God is ever there, dwelling within us. And in yoga, we, we say we go to school to learn, we come to yoga to unlearn, to take away what we're not, to remember, to come back to the essence, and the, the essence and center of our whole being. And what we need to do is, Master would say so beautifully, you can't get rid of darkness or ignorance by beating at it with the stick or the darkness. He said, turn on the light, which we're missing some lights here, but we turn on the light as we meditate, as we chant, as we have satsang, as we serve, as we sing in the choir, we're turning on the light that is always there, that has always been there, from joy I came, for joy I live, and sacred joy I melt again. And there's a, also another very beautiful chant of, of uh, Swamiji's, Come out of the darkness, Mother, bathe me in thy light. Come out of the ignorance, come out of the, the forgetfulness, come out of the pain, the worries, the sorrows, the sufferings, that we live in all the time, come out and bathe me in thy light. And Master had a, a disciple who was <clears throat> always in moods and was, oh, suffering, oh, if that didn't happen, oh, my karma. And we hear it over and over, um, like a mantra, actually. <laughs> People say these things over and over. Master saw this one man and he just said, come out of that body, come out, come out of there, meaning come out of that delusion, come out of that ignorance, come out of that darkness, come out of that shell of who and what you think you are, come into the light. And every day as we meditate, as we practice the techniques, the masters are inviting us, come into the light, come into my light, come into wisdom, come into peace come into truth. And Guruji said, he said, uh, he said, I killed Yogananda long ago. No one dwells here at all now but God. And that's what every, the striving of every yogi, every devotee should be. I got rid of that person. I got rid of that personality. I got rid of those desires. I got rid of those attachments. I got rid of that karma. I got rid of those old memories. There's no one here now but God. And I remember as I lived in Ananda in San Francisco, there was a, a beautiful soul there. Uh, I can't remember which teaching he practiced, but his name was Shunyabai, Brother Zero. <laughs> I just loved that name. That there's nobody here but God. And we peel away all that we all the outer coverings until we come in front of the divine, a wave of the ocean, where the wave is a part of the ocean. We think, oh, I'm a wave, so I, I'm on my own. No, we're part of the ocean of cosmic consciousness, the ocean of samadhi, the ocean of bliss. But we have to remember, and yoga helps us to remember that consciousness. And as we look here at the spiritual eye, this is why we look at this point. I asked you to do that as we were meditating today that this is the point of exit. This is the point of leaving the body. This is the point of going into the light. If thine eye be single, it says in the Holy Bible, thy whole body shall be filled with light. Wow. If you can gaze at this point and see the spiritual eye and go into the spiritual eye, that's where the halo comes and we see the pictures of the saints, and that's where the aura 
comes. It comes from this light. It doesn't come from emotions. And the emotions block the aura and weaken it. Uh, desires and attachments, they block and weaken, but if we can look here at the spiritual eye, that's why we wear the, the bindi here. It's not, oh, I, this is a, it's a decorative. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most people it's decorative, but I mean, come on, let's face it. It means a whole lot more than a decoration. It means that I'm living in the light. This is where my consciousness is. Yogananda Ji said, keep your consciousness here all day long. You can't go around looking up all day, but you can keep your awareness, your consciousness there. And if you can look there, then your whole body, if you can live from there, if you could speak from there, if you could sing from there, if you can enjoy everything from the spiritual eye, your whole body begins to be filled more and more with light. And we know the story when Guruji was looking, he went to the train station looking for his guru. He was coming in on the train, Swami Sri Tesvarji, and Master was looking for him, and then he saw the certain compartment and was filled with light. There was a big aura around that part of the train. He said, that's where my Guruji is. I see his aura. And this is how the yogi lives. We live in a bubble of light, but it's up to us to maintain that, to expand it, to help it to grow, to step into it, to walk into it, to walk into life in that consciousness. And then we can feel the upliftment that God is always present. And even in ignorance, that joy, even in pain, even in suffering, even in sorrow, the joy is ever there underneath. And Swamiji said, told a beautiful story when he was, he was going through a very, tr a, a time of his life of great trials, great, um, disappointment, great suffering. And someone asked him to come and sing some of this, his songs. This is, these are Swamiji songs you hear on Sundays. And, and he thought, I just can't, I can't do it. I've just in too much pain myself. And they convinced him to come. So he went and he, he sang some of the songs. And, and uh, people said to him, I felt so much joy from you. And he thought, joy? <laughs> I didn't feel any joy. But it's always there, in the, your darkest hour. Remember, that's ever there. We came from that. You can't get rid of the God that's within you. You can cover it up, but it's still there. And so a beautiful story Guruji told of a, a man who came up to him, and he had been drinking, and you know he was inebriated. And he says uh, to Master, because you know Master had long hair, and you know, he, he, he did look a bit like Jesus Christ. And this man came up, he says, hey, and the man who was drunk, he said, hey, Jesus Christ. And, and uh, so Master looked at him and, and uh, he gave him this, you know, this shot of energy. Yogananda <laughs> did. And, and then the man, he says, uh, hey, what you been drinking? And <laughs> Master says, it's got a lot of kick in it. And he just gave him a shot of his light and his joy, and the man became sobered on the spot. And so even in the, in the drunkenness, there was still that flow of God within him. Of course, his soul was ever pure. He had just covered it over. And then some uh, three men came to found Yoganandaji after a talk once, and they f uh, followed him on a dark street, and, and uh, they had guns. And uh, they were, one put a gun into his back, and Yogananda turned around and he just says, I mean, you would imagine him since someone saying this at that time, he says, why do you live this way? You're not happy. <laughs> and the man had the gun to his back, he says, you're not happy. Why are you living like this? And then the, the three men start trembling, and, and they drop their guns, and they, they said, what are you doing to us? What are you doing to us? And they ran away. They couldn't do it. Another man came after a lecture in Master's sitting room there, and, and he said he threw the gun down on the desk. He said, I came to kill you, but I can't do it. He couldn't do it because God was in Master. He felt it. He felt the light. He couldn't do it. He was changed. And we all know the story of Valmiki, who was a highway robber. 
and he robbed people all the time. So he was robbing some saintly men. And they said, what are you, why are you robbing people? This is wrong. It's bad karma. It's not good to do. And he says, uh, I have to feed my family. And they said, well, you go ask your family if they're, gonna, if they're happy to take the karma that you're getting from doing this, what you're doing. And he said, I'm sure they're happy to take the karma. They said, if you go ask your family. And if your family is happy to take the bad karma that you're getting from stealing from people, then fine. If they're not happy, will you follow us? And he says, uh, yes, I'll follow you if they're not happy. But I'm sure they're happy. So he went and told them, and they said, no, we're not happy. We're not going to take your karma, your bad karma. So he goes back, and he says, I'll follow you. And they said, OK. You have to chant the name of Rama. 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 He says, I can't say that. He says, I can't say that name. It's too holy. I can't do it. He said, that's your mantra, Rama. Rama. He said, I just won't do it. He said, well, okay. Why don't you chant Mara? He <laughs> says, what an ingenious thing. Chant Mara, which means Satan. Mara. Mara said, okay, I can chant Mara. He says, Mara, Mara, change the Rama, Rama. <laughs> and then he became a saint. So that, that consciousness, that the light was, is ever there, no matter what. And nobody can tell you that it's not. You can't let anyone say that to you. And in America, it's just all the way through. People, you're a sinner. You, you're going to hell. I mean, it's gone over and over. And you know, Nandaji was in a church where the, the I think it was... Uh, McPherson, Amy McPherson, but she st stood there and said, everybody here is a sinner. Get down on your knees. You're all sinners. And Master was there. He said, I'm not going to get down on my knees. I'm not a sinner. And he, he looks around. Everybody's down on their knees. <laughs> and he said he was the only one who did not do it. You cannot ever affirm that. A saint is a sinner who never, ever, ever gave up. Never give up. Never say, no, this, uh, it's my karma, no, I'm, I'm going to worry the rest of my life, no, I'll be ill my whole life. I'll be, affirm that goodness. And what I love about this spiritual path is it's directional. From wherever you are, head in the right direction. And go there hand in hand with the masters. When I came to this path, I, I came uh, right after college. And I was, I remember when I left my home, I didn't know much about Ananda then. I was 21 years old. I had read out a biography of a yogi and I felt, and I felt a memory from the pages, from looking at the pictures of the saints, from the, the Kriya Yoga, all the things he talked about. And I remember when I left my home, my whole family was in tears. And they said, well, where are you going? I mean, I, I didn't really know so much about the path. I didn't know about all the things we know about today, karma and reincarnation and gurus in India, and, uh, vegetarianism, and the list went on and on. But I could feel that's the direction I should go in. One step after the other. And everyone was weeping in my family. And they said, well, where are you going? And I said, all I know is the place is called Ananda. Ananda. I barely knew what Ananda meant. They said, what is it? My mother said, what is Ananda? I said, all I know is Ananda means joy. And I have to go. And I walked in that direction. I remember I got on the LA freeway. And I was in my little car, packed with all my stuff. and. As I was driving on the other lane next to me was a long procession of funeral black cars. And it came to my mind, Swami Sri Tesvaji's words that finding God will be the funeral of all your sorrows. And I went to Ananda. That's the direction. If you have you don't know what's Everything is going to happen, but you at least know the direction. And if you head in that direction, you will find that the light comes, that joy comes, that peace.
peace comes, that God comes and shows himself that he was always there in your life, guiding you forever. And that memory will come when the Master said, when he saw his guru finally met him. You know the autobiography, if you haven't read it, you please get that book today. He said, when he finally saw his guru at the end of that conspicuous lane in Sarampur, inconspicuous lane in Sarampur, he said he looked at him and he tried to turn away. But he kept his fever rooted. And then he said, he looked at him and he realized that he had seen those eyes a million times in his dream. He had felt that vibration forever. And then he, remember he dropped his parcels and he ran. And his friend, uh, what was his friend's name, Jatendra? He said, uh, he dropped his things and he ran and he says, what? What's wrong with you? And he mastered his race and he went into the arms of his guru. The moment is there, and we run to God, and His arms are ever open, and joy is ever there, and He's waiting. That's the moment for each devotee, now and always. Remember that joy, that love of God is ever there. Nothing can ever cover that for anyone in this world is ever there. God bless you all.